welcome to its scale model fix and a brand new kit review this time we've got Academy's A10C Thunderbolt 2 in 148 scale so without further ado let's conduct the box top tour so we've got some lovely full coverage box art there with the Academy logo in the bottom right hand corner on the box sides we just have some photos of the prototype model looking like we get some canopy masks with this one box end we've got the title box art repeated and your kit number for this one is 12348 on the final side we've just got some paint cross reference numbers for Humbrol, GSI, Live Colour, Testers, Revel, Vallejo and AK Interactive and you've got the usual multilingual warnings and information. So let's lift the lid and see what we get in the box. So there's quite a bit of plastic there in this kit. So we've got the rear fuselage and engine nasals and the nose in one bag. Clear cockpit parts, a little information sheet number of sprues there, there's two weapon sprues fuselage belly plate forward fuselage cockpits drop tanks we have the wings engine nasal front quite a nice looking decal sheet And the instruction booklet. So looking at the instruction book in our A10, we, it's printed in black and white. We've got some colour call outs there at the bottom and it's one of these fold out booklet affairs. The imagery looks quite small and there's a lot of information built into each of the pictorial diagrams that's going to be a little bit hard to follow I think. Anyway, so step one Here's construction of the undercarriage bay. It looks to be really well detailed and we've got some colour call outs there along the way. Once we've got that done we then build it up into what looks like the roof as well. Obviously on the A10 the landing gear is offset to make room for that cannon and that's placed in quite early in the build and we do have some masks there for the wheels. This is very, very small, as you can see by my fingers there. It's quite a tiny diagram. I'd like to have seen that a little bit bigger. Once we've got the undercarriage bay cemented in place into the fuselage halves, we move to step two, which is a replication of the ACES 2 jet seat. Cockpit tub looks to be quite well detailed, colour call outs again. Uh, in use of decals there for the instrumentation and it's repeated with decals there again for the instrumentation on the main instrument panel combing and instrument panel and everything coming into place as we progress through to stage three which is where we cement the completed cockpit tub between the fuselage halves these instructions are really quite small stage five on the overleaf is inclusion of the bulkhead which is going to be critical to alignment between the front end and the rear of the fuselage, undercarriage bay going in, sorry, undercarriage doors going onto the pre assembled undercarriage. We're going to have to find a better way of assembling that, that's just asking to be broken off and really added so early in the build, unless it really has to. But we'll have a look at that in the build itself. Single fuselage piece for the rear, joining to the fuselage front section that we just constructed, and part C26 is the rear decking. And that looks as though an A may be on the cards at some point because that's got the GPS dome antenna on it there as well. Pilot is included. And then we're on to stage 8 which sees some of the underwings, sorry, centerline pylons being added with the ventral strakes and the main undercarriage door. Over the overleaf we're looking at the wings being built up, separate flaps 
doesn't look as though they can be deployed. We'll have to have a look at that at some point. Sponsons for the undercarriage and more pylons and open or close speed brakes. And again, folding it open is simply a repetition for the other side. And I'm not sure again whether we can deploy those flaps. But we'll look and we'll see if we can modify those. They do look as though they're on recesses, but it's whether they'll re whether they'll retract or look natural or not. Over the page, sees the continuation of the wings. More weaponry going onto those pylons with the wings being then added to the model, and then it says proceed to manual two. Manual two looks a little bit better. So there's the Pave Penny Pod, which a lot of people were berating Academy for, saying, oh, the C didn't have the Pave Penny Pod. Well, version in the kit, version 1, must have done, but we'll check our references on that to confirm before we set off. Cannon going on the nose, single-piece nose, covering all your hard work there. Vertical tail coming in, quite straightforward. And again... More weaponry, blade aerials, tail end, and then the Academy's new unique way of having the engine cover, which we'll show you in a second, with the engine fans being constructed and then inserted into the open ends. Canopies coming on, a lot more detail there for whether you want it open or closed. Front canopy is nice to see that it does contain some of the surrounding fuselage, crew access ladder, and Fueling, refueling door being able to be posed open. Onto the decals, and we have a comprehensive stencil suite included. Looking at those, uh, with port starboard profiles and some colour diagrams there for the A10 colour pattern. And then it's onto the marking options included in the kit, of which are four. So it does say in here that the paved penny pod is only fitted to this aircraft and we have the decals for that one and that was at Bagram Air Base in 2014 and then we go through and we've got a similar trend but with undated airframe and the similar markings to the one above. We've got the heritage scheme honouring the 23rd fighter group the Flying Tigers with the camouflaged vertical tails and the flying tiger emblem on the engine nasals and finally we've got the Mustang and checkerboards uh, for Korea 2021-22 and on the back we have the parts map so taking a look at these instructions I'm not a fan they are very they look out of date compared to other manufacturers and they do look really hard to follow. There's a lot of information contained in some of these, especially this nose gear one. It is really, really quite small. As we said, there's my hand for comparison. But nonetheless, we'll see how they go through. Now, Academy on the front of this, I've just noticed, it said you can download the latest version of the instruction manual by visiting academyhobby.com, clicking the link for the instruction and download and entering the item number. So we'll have a look at that, we'll try that and see if those instructions are any better than what we've been supplied with in the kit. So looking at the decal sheet, it does look to be well printed, it's very glossy and very thick. I can feel those markings as I run my fingers over those. So we'll just have a look, try not to catch the light too much there in the camera on the glossy surface, but it's catching the studio lights there, it is that reflective. And then we have a small sheet of masking material I'm not sure what we can describe this as it's very very thin so we'll have a look at those when we build the kit it doesn't say whether decals are manufactured or who they're printed by but it just says printed in Korea turning our attention to the plastic and this is what grabbed my attention at scale model world so we have a single slide moulded rear fuselage, yep it is one piece and the detail on the under surface of this is absolutely stunning. 
we can just bring you in a bit closer and catch that in the camera. Anybody who knows the A10 will know that the rear fuselage is covered in raised rivets which are replicated. You can feel them as I'm rubbing my fingers over that. And the only clean up is going to be the centre line seam. And that isn't even on the bottom of the fuselage part there. The other thing that also made me look twice was the single moulded rear engine section or the end nasals and yes they're one solid piece as well but there's a slight line through the centre there that'll just need a quick clean up and then you build your engines up and insert them into there and the fit does look to be quite reasonable at this early stage I mean there's no construction taking place but the fit does look to be quite good slide moulding technology again we have a single piece nose and we've also got the front of the cannon barrel there and a heads up display I'll not get that out of the bag it is looking to be easily lost but again I'm sure hopefully you see through there don't have the detail it contains moving on to the sprues in no particular order and this is sprue G and we have the instrument panel which is really quite nice nice to see that it's not flat as we first feared when we were looking at the instructions and we placed those decals on we've got some nice detail there on the roof of the gear bay blade aerials appendage for the tail control column etc on that one spray E has the belly plate and again, the camera will focus on that. The surface detail is fantastic. We have two sprue D's in the kit. So we've got some sway braces for your pylons. The inner pods for the engine nasals, launch rails, first stage compressors, weaponry arms for, and heads for the pilot. We've got visor up and visor down there on parts 39 and 40. So overall again, nothing notices uh, or grabs the attention about the way it's been moulded on these just standard sprues. Quite well executed. Sprue F, we've got that gigantic centreline tank and some of the pods and jamming pods that are included in the kit. Again, nothing to write home about. Lovely detail on these and should look good once built up. Sprue A contains the majority of the parts on the kit so we have pylons cockpit tub which again features some lovely details there if we can get the camera to focus and then we have the forward fuselage parts and again the surface detail on these is really quite nice Aces to eject to see again, it's well detailed. We've got, uh, some so, we do have some lovely detailed pylons there. So, all the under edge of the pylon is depicted by Academy. Sprue, let's have a look. C contains the vertical tails, and that's got those raised rivets on. Again, I'll try and bring that into the camera catch the light hopefully you can see those sponsons chaff flare buckets there open speed brakes all looking very nice so for those of you wishing to think that you might be able to back this backdate this to an A you would have to remove this GPS dome which is a hollow piece and you'd also have to fabricate a gas uh, vent on the uh, forward fuselage. The wings 
uh, superbly detailed and it doesn't look in the first instance that those flaps are positionable but we'll have a look at that in the build and I will be bringing this as a video build in the not too distant future so all in all a very nice looking model so the plastic on the sprues is far superior than the information contained in the instruction booklet I'm looking forward to getting this on the bench. I think we've been long overdue for a state-of-the-art tooling of the A10. We had the Hobby Boss one and the old Tamiya and monogram, ver monogram versions before that. So it'd be really nice to see what Academy can bring to the table with this offering. So until next time everyone, please look after yourselves, stay well and take care.